I'm fair point. <laughs> I'm a treasure of the nation. Uh, you'll know me from such greats <laughs> as the crown. And who are you? I'm Paul Bettany. I'm a great person. <laughs> <laughs> She's never seen any of my work. It's so clear. And I'm very talented. I play Margaret, the Duchess of Argyle. She is a sort of it girl. When you meet her at the beginning of episode one, she is very, very famous and very adored and, and she sort of has everything that anybody could ever want, really. She's got money and status and fame. Then she meets this man who also gives her the opportunity to become a member of the aristocracy. And then it all goes spectacularly wrong. I saw the crowds. How was the reception? Rapturous, what do you want? We played a spirited game, but we both know you don't have the guts for this. Do we really? I play Ian uh, Campbell, Captain Ian Campbell, later the Duke of Argyle. Ian is an uh, impoverished arister uh, and uh, tends to fall in love with people with lots of money. Convenient. Uh, who, yeah, who can fund his dissolute ways. Or I think they they, com they complete each other just in a really messy way. They sort of meet at the worst bits of themselves, and and the way that they are immersed in each other, emerged is pretty sick. She sees he's damaged, and she loves that he needs her, and she loves that she can make him see in himself what she sees, which is this great man. Shipwreck full of jewels. It's like finding the El Dorado. Could almost touch it. People have tried previous dukes. No one's managed it yet. Cost a bloody fortune. Maybe you will. The way it plays out in the press is extraordinary. Like the fact that they use, openly use the press to get each other. So much about their story is that you genuinely couldn't make it up. Like these, there's sort of like a guilelessness. The same rules don't apply and neither of them want to lose. And so that just means they go to great lengths. To your point, I do think they're sort of locked in this game with each other that they can't quite get out of. And what have you ever created in your entire life? Except you. I think that I didn't know anything about this. I never knew that this there was a Dutch Svargal. I never knew anything about the scandal. I never knew anything about the court case. I sort of loved how bold it was and how like colourful it was, I suppose, in a way. And what I w I've been surprised by it, though, like the humanity of the both pair of them in in those situations, in something that you sort of read and you go, "Wow, that's funny" or "That's clever." And then when you get to actually play the scene, the scene is about two people. It's about a relationship. It would be very easy for them to become sort of me twizzling a moustache, and I. Th thought that if there was somebody that wasn't, that was sort of really up to making something that was a little more complex than looking at why she stayed in that toxic relationship and what it was about him and what it was about her that made them stay, stay together, it would be Claire and, and I was, I was right. I, I enjoy working with Paul and playing that relationship and understanding the people and seeing how they interact with each other. And fun. I'm, I'm really fun, by the way. She's very... Really fun. She's, she's very funny. Fun. You know, to look at. <laughs> Thanks. The very things that draw them to each other are the very things that make them an impossible couple. Couldn't live with them, can't live without them. That sort of, I think, definitely that sort of relationship. And I do think, you know, in my romantic, ridiculous brain, I'm right, they loved each other to the end. Thank you.